Cindy. Oh. She's tough. She's on her way. Okay. Yeah, I'll be This one went off to the side for a reason? Or? Just got it done. Oh. Just ripped it out at the end. Really? So we didn't have it in the back because you know, we wanted what? you to have a copy. Oh, I was having a problem. Problem. Two meetings in a row, I couldn't get the, couldn't get the agenda. And then, I can't get it and then all of a sudden, I decided, I decided that <laughs> from the third meeting, I decided that. Well, he signed it here. Yeah, I scored it off the top of there. Yeah. 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 That's all I did too. Yeah, that's just a copy for you guys to look at. Yeah, this one is the signed copy if you guys decide to do that. Okay. uh, I was going to bring mine in, but Jason had four times. I meant to bring it in. And uh, she fixed it for me. I don't know what the hell happened. I'm going to have him look at it. Yeah. Six thirty. You want to roll? You want to just oh, well, your says it. Computer says it. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll call the regular June meeting to order. Uh, we'll call, I guess, uh, Noel, Jeremy, Joe, and I are here for board members. Well, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, is there anything on the agenda you'd like? Anybody like remove, revise, or remove? Move to approve. I have a motion I'll to approve. I'll second that. No second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Um, at this time, we'll entertain comments from visitors. Uh, they must be informational in nature, not to exceed five minutes per issue. The board will not engage in a discussion or debate in this five minutes, but will take the information and find answers if that's appropriate. Uh, as part of board protocol, it's unacceptable for any speaker to slander or engage in character assassination at a public board meeting. Comments in this part of the, of the comment section will be address, addressing only things that are on today's agenda. Uh, if there's time allowed after the meet, after the regular meeting, if it doesn't exceed two hours, we will uh, listen about other issues. At this time, uh, does anybody like to speak? Okay. Howdy. Hi there. Have you introduced yourself? And for sure. Hi, my name is Tennille Palmer. I'm a mother, a Christian, a farmer, and a proud, hardworking American who believes in traditional American values rooted in the Judeo-Christian worldview that we have God-given individual sovereignty and inalienable rights. I also believe that our civilization was created by dependent on enlightenment rationalism. And both of these principles are being eroded in our country as a result of postmodernism, which argues subjectivity over objectivity, and critical theory, which is simply neo-Marxism, which is derived from the Frankfurt Marxist school of thought, which sought to distance itself from the atrocities of the other Marxists and did an excellent job as nowadays it goes virtually unrecognized as Marxism. Contrary to what you might hear, it did not magically appear in Harvard legal studies out of nowhere. The convergence of these two ideologies is also referred to as woke and is insidiously embedded inside the social and emotional learning. The social component is the idea that anyone in the public school sector should be engaging and actively attempting to socialize my child in one way or another. That is my job and as a parent and as families rights 
as sovereign individuals to make those choices for their own children, especially when nowadays what passes as social science are racist concepts such as Ibram X. Kendi's anti-racism and Robin D'Angelo's white fragility, or any notion that power and privilege resides in your race. And it is terrifying that we are indoctrinating our children into these Marxist lies. Kids deserve to be kids, and it is our job as adults to foster the American tradition of colorblindness in the public sphere to live up to the values and principles put down in our Constitution and Bill of Rights and not lose perspective of the amazing gains we have made. The 1619 Project wants you to believe we were founded on slavery. Lies. Slavery existed everywhere and Christians abolished it. Americans abolished it. Thomas Sowell, born in Harlem, 1930 and senior fellow at the Hoover Institute, said racism, racism is not dead, but it is on life support, kept alive by the politicians, race hustlers, and people who get a sense of superiority by denouncing others as racist. As for the emotional component of SEL, to quote Thomas Sowell again, someone once said that the most important knowledge is knowledge of our own ignorance. Our schools are depriving millions of students of that kind of knowledge by promoting self-esteem and encouraging them to have opinions on things of which they are grossly ignorant, if not misinformed. It is not an educator's job to conduct the roles and responsibilities of a licensed therapist and more than likely crosses legal and ethical boundaries by doing so. Five years ago, my husband and I lived in California. He was originally from Minnesota. We quickly realized in order to raise a family, we needed to get back to where things still made sense. So we moved back to Minnesota and ultimately chose Aiken for many reasons. Among them, we assumed a small town would have small town values. It would really be a shame if we caved to these radical pressures that often have funding and accreditation attached to them, acting as some kind of de facto social credit score or withholding school lunch funding if we don't adopt an anti-science gender policy based on queer theory, another Marxist critical theory masquerading as science. I have family members who are gay and it is an irrelevant component. Queer theory has nothing to do with equal rights. Critical race theory is a parasite on the racial civil rights movement and queer theory is a parasite on the gay civil rights movement. Every individual deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. But our children deserve not to be lied to about basic biology, not to mention our civilization depends on being able to distinguish between reality and non, objective and subjective, in science and ideology. We had it correct already. We didn't need to change anything. Equality, not equity. There was no invisible culture of bigotry or white supremacy or any need for anyone to check their white privilege, which is another racist concept devised to win an argument without evidence. Another Thomas Sowell quote, quote Racism is like ketchup. It can be put on practically everything, and demanding evidence makes you a racist. If you believe in equal rights, then what do women's rights, gay rights, etc. mean? Either they are redundant or they are violating the principle of equal rights for all. No, no individual and no generation has had enough personal experience to ignore the vast experience of the human race that is called history. Yet most of our schools and colleges today pay little attention to history, and many current policies repeat mistakes that were made time and time again in the past with disastrous results. Equity is a synonym for socialism. Prior to the World War II, Eugenics was a progressive movement supported by most intellectuals in universities. It wasn't until we saw in Germany what happens when we follow that path all the way to its end that our universities as well as the progressives swept it under the rug. And I feel we have done a relatively sufficient job at educating American generations since of the dangers of anti-Semitism. What we have failed miserably at is educating our children on the ideology that resulted in far more death than even the Nazis, and that is Marxism. I've seen several school board meetings across the country where Chinese Americans who lived through Mao's Cultural Revolution have come forward to warn us. This is currently happening right here in America. We would be foolish not to listen to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Jennifer Cummings, graduate of Aiken High School, community member. Um, this is not something that I'm going to read. These, this is the minutes, the minutes from the May 16th meeting. And um, I'm very concerned that uh, at the end of the minutes, it says comments for the school board. And three people spoke at the last meeting, and there's no record of that. And I read into um, the recording, and it was not recorded for some unknown reason. Um, I thought about uh, reading that again, and I might at some point in the future, um, but I'm just concerned um, 
because the newspaper is aware of the policy that says they need to print in the newspaper that their account of the meeting is only a summary and that to see the official minutes for all of the official proceedings. Well, the official proceedings make it look like there were no community members here who shared their thoughts. And while I understand it's difficult to, to write down what each person says, I think there should be at least a record of individuals speaking to the board. Um, and so I, I hope the board will address that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to speak? Okay, nobody jumping up. We'll move on to scheduled presentation. Uh, Laura. I heard I have like 30 minutes. Is that what I got? Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that want to take notes or don't like technology, I made copies. Dan said to keep it short and sweet, but I don't. We'll see. So, community education, I thought I would just come fill you in on this year because it's been um, far better than the last couple years, for obvious reasons. Um, so if we look at this year as a glance, granted, we still have a couple weeks left, but this is basically what we're looking at. Community education, we've had a total of 53 total classes or programs. That's not each individual class, that's like the program itself. So if I had a, like the, for example, um, the mixed media art class, I just clumped that into one total class. And so even though there was like eight or nine sections of that. Um, so we had almost 2,500 participants and approximately 98,000 in gross revenue. Now granted, don't get too excited. It's gross revenue and there's a lot of payouts that go along with that. Um, but there were also a, a lot of outside grants and donations. Um, our adult programs, we had 15 classes, programs, 472 participants, about 4,200 in gross revenue. Um, our youth programs, uh, 28 classes or programs, 1,600 participants, um, a little over 81,000 in gross revenue. Age to Age, which is our intergenerational programs, we had four programs, 275 participants, 740 in gross revenue. Um, and then, kind of fun this year, we had six bus trips. We haven't done that in a while. 132 participants. That's slow to grow. Usually we have a lot more than that, but people are starting to get a little bit more excited to get back to on the bus and, and heading out. This was for what day? This was Ju January or uh, July 1st to today. Gotcha. Um, and then these are all the different community partnerships that I have worked with over the course of the year, and I'm sure that I've forgotten a few, so I apologize to those that I've forgotten. Um, but that's something that I, I worked really hard on is creating stronger community partnerships um, with our local nonprofits and, and, and businesses in town. Um, so what I did is I put it on a chart. Oh, sorry. I put it on a chart. So if you look on the left, it's all of the programs and then fiscal year 18. So now granted, this is skewed because when I started um, in July of 2018, we had a terrible re uh, online registration system. I couldn't pull any of the data even before I left. It was just awful. So the January 1st is when I started the new registration system. So there's the six months of data from uh, that spring. Then you can see fiscal year 19, um, we had eight months of normalcy and then COVID hit. So you can see where we were within those eight months. Mm -hmm. um, and then where we've jumped to, there's COVID and then there's where, where we are now, what I just read to you. Um, and so you can see at the bottom, I went from 62 programs. Now I have to tell you this, the numbers, the number of programs is skewed um, because when I first put this together, I was doing all the, like where I said I had mixed media, I had eight classes where I counted all eight of them instead of the one. So it, it's not, ne this isn't necessarily comparing apples to apples here in that, in the number of programs. It is in the number of participants though. Um, and so moving forward, I'll continue to do the way, track it the way I've just done it. Um, but I guess I wanted to point out pre-COVID, I had two people at the time, we were 1.6 FTE and then COVID hit and then we went down to, and that's, hard, I don't know how to shrink that. So you can see the bottom, it's 0.75. So COVID hit, I went down to me at a 0.75. I stayed at me at a 0.75 and I'm still me at a 0.75 plus 
plus then add the ECFE early childhood at a 0.15. So I'm a, I'm a 0.9 doing two people's job. Yeah. Um, so school age care, I've got kids club, which uh, Bobby Joe used to run. Now is my, my project as well. So you can see how many kids we had in the fiscal year 18, 19, and then this year in the school year. Um, and then in summer, um, we usually will get a lot more over the course of July into August as kids start to get squirrely at home all day by themselves or ask gets over with. Um, and so we're, we're doing really well with Kids Club. I have an excellent staff this year, um, all year long, all summer. Um, and I think it's just a testament to the people love being around our kids. You know, we've got great kids in the building and then we got great kids after school. And so that's gone really well. Um, the Aiken Children's Center, total kids in threes and fours preschool served within this year. This is kind of a fiscal year 18, we had 104, 19 was 96 and then COVID. And so we jumped back up this year. Um, currently enrolled for next year, we have 61. Part of that's just that we're a low sense this year. So we'll see, you know, if we can get that up into the 80s, that would be fantastic. So we still have spots open for families in both threes and fours. Um, so yeah, so growth. Um, I'd like to see more community ed programs and collaborations. I think there's a lot more we could be doing. I'm kind of excited for all these ideas I have. Um, I want to expand on current programs. Um, I have secured about $40,000 in Northland Foundation grants just for the first three that are listed, the Family, Friends, and Neighbors, Child Care Center Partnerships, and Early Learner Social Hours. These have not been put into, into action yet. Um, they're going to be coming in this next fiscal year, um, those three initiatives within the community. A lot of them are community outreach partnerships with um, early childhood. And then we have our age to age initiatives where the grand friend is our poster child of that, where we've got the third graders writing letters to the older adults in the community. And then um, we've had a lot of spin off from that that's gone out really well. Um, and then uh, wraparound child care, I'm hoping to grow. Um, we've got our Tuesday, Thursday preschool program. And so we're going to be adding what's called wraparound child care. So if kids go to the AM preschool, they can come and stay for child care in the, in the afternoon. So they don't have to worry about midday transportation. It takes a lot of stress off parents having to worry about that midday transportation. Um, and so then as an offshoot of that, I'm going to make our garden, hopefully, if I can get all my ducks in a row, um, or make our garden into an outdoor classroom in the winter. Um, so I've got a big yurt style tent I want to get and then you know, that way the kids in the wraparound childcare can be out there more during the day and then our preschool um, teachers can utilize that. And they'd still be fenced in because the garden is fenced in and it's not used in, you know, from September to May. So that's kind of the growth that I'm currently looking at, although I've got a lot of other ideas. Um, what I need from the community, we need to continue to offer to teach the community classes and volunteer with our kids. Um, I nobody wants me teaching every class I can't teach every class so I really rely on people that step up to to teach things I just had a, a, a youth trapping certification class this week and that came as a suggestion from somebody in the community that said we'd love to have these kids learn how to trap awesome it was fantastic um, and so I get a lot of that people calling me up so I, community if you're if you're paying attention out there please uh, reach out let me know what you can offer if you want to teach a class, if you have a passion, um, or even just shoot out an idea of what we need, what we want. Um, continue to come to our programs. That's how we keep them going. I can put all the programs in the accent, but if people aren't coming, then I don't, I stop running them. So keep coming to the program, keep spreading the word about the offerings. Um, from the teachers, principals, include us, include community ed in your brainstorming. Um, I think that's been one of the fun things that's happened this year is that I had a fourth grade teacher say, hey, I'm teaching my kids how to play cribbage. You know, can you get us some cribbage boards? Can you bring in some adults to play to play cribbage? And so I reached out to the grand friends and we had, you know, about 12 to 15 once a month that came in and played cribbage. So it was just kind of this brainstorming on the teacher's end. Um, you know, then also keep me informed on things that, that are happening that you like to see the community involved with. Um, you know, and then from the school board, your support and feedback, um, I think, you know, you guys for checking in with me every now and then, asking how things are going and um, hearing, being the ears out in the community and, and hearing what we got going on and 
what we need to change or do different. And so, any questions? I, I, I was trying to hold it to the 10 minutes. <laughs> Denny. Thank you. You did good. <laughs> No questions? So if you haven't if you haven't followed our Facebook page, you should. Um, we just brought a hundred and we have 110 kids signed up as a partnership with Title Team. Um, 110 kids signed up to go to the state parks every Wednesday throughout summer for the next seven weeks. And so it was a blast. It was a blast. I'm, I can't wait to do it every year. We're just gonna it was so much fun. So anyway. Yeah, I, I had one as a participant and one as a counselor. It was awesome. And they both had a a really really good time yeah yeah. yeah and we just we we're so lucky we have so many state parks right here you yeah. know and so just to bring kids out to be kids for a day and fish and canoe and kayak and i have so. one in the uh in the trapping uh, yeah certification yeah. on saturday and and had a blast yeah um had pulled beaver for lunch i, I know oh, yeah. and apparently now they I said yeah. My family uh, uh, said they're yeah. making beaver. I said, nope, not on nights I'm home. <laughs> it's actually better either. than duck. Yeah. <laughs> so, but duck. just keep, keep, uh, keep letting like me know either. what you guys hear, what we can be doing, what community ed could be offering, because, you know, the things that swirl around here isn't necessarily a micro cut, is, you know, what's really going on, but. Laura, where are you going this week with the parks? We are going to Father Hennepin, oh, wow. on the south side of Mille Lacs. Yep. And then we go Cathio, Banning, yep. Jay Cook. Charles Lindbergh and Itasca. Great. Itasca is the last one. I'll have to make a pit stop along the way. I have a feeling our little, our <laughs> youngest ones get squirrely after 45 minutes. So, <laughs> so all right. Well, let me know if anything comes up that you need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you much. <laughs> okay. Uh, old business. Discuss the curriculum review plan and committee. I could jump in real quick. Yep. Um, we were kind of at a standstill last meeting. We talked about a variety of things. Um, uh, you know, the number of community members uh, on, the, on the committee and, and how do we select them. Um, I think we were, we voted down three. There was discussion about four or five, five uh, community members uh, on each of the review teams. That was an odd number, was a, was a thought. Um, if there is a vote or if there is something along that. And also, if somebody can't make it, there's still members there. The challenge I have is how do we select the five out of out of the people that have volunteered? Um, <clears throat> I sent to the board. And I think it's in the you know, the whole thing. The whole curriculum review plan is in the packet. Um, at that middle level, there's principals, the the district assessment coordinator, board member, uh, teacher of the curriculum. It does say two parents and community members. We don't really know who those are yet. Um, but I think to make a recommendation that we uh, go to that group, the District Curriculum Review Committee, and have them uh, look at ways and how they're going to solve that question of how do we select or how do the five, five committee members get selected, um, excuse me, community members get selected to the committee. It, it, uh, I don't know a good or bad necessarily way of, of, of doing that, but um, I think that'd be something that committee could discuss, so it's we got a, a variety of discussion points or topics or ways to to look at it but I think it ultimately has to become a vote because you can't appoint um, <clears throat> otherwise it's it's too hard you get you end up with some this person appointing here and that appointing there and then you end up with 15 candidates and you you don't right. get to the end you know I think that maybe the process to your point of how it decided but I think ultimately it's gonna end up how many are we wanting on each committee and and you know, I think it's uh, maybe a you know a vote. To, it's kind of like a serving on a committee at whether it's you know Malax or the hospital or wherever. So you know, yeah, the I mean, committee vote or the people that want to be on the committee's vote of amongst the group. I think I think the people that. Well, I, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I don't know that <clears throat> answer. Yeah. Um, you know who who votes? Well, that's uh, why I think it'd be a good discussion if we got the district review committee together. To see what, how do we go about? If, we're, if, if the board agrees with five, five community members, how, what's a good way to right. select, vote, elect? However, we want to do that, and 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 then have that group come forward with a plan and, and make connections with the thirty-seven or thirty-eight people that were interested, and and uh, go from there. So, yeah, kind of. Yeah, would it, yeah, go ahead, John. Um, would it be then like? Um, but you're talking this first group, the group yeah, in the middle, right there. Yeah. Okay. Would it been then be so? 
let's say there is five. We'll just for speak. Um, then if somebody wanted to sit in in on a meeting, they they would have that opportunity. Yeah. I think they'd be open meetings, correct? Right. right. Yeah. So yeah, just listen in and like this, right? That people might have people on the committee yeah. and people could be in the like audience or whatever and, and listening in or watching yep. or. Then they have somebody to go to for that. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Go. Yeah, I was just gonna say I, I like the idea of five, um, an odd number, and and since five only because we have so many, we're fortunate to have a lot of volunteers who want to do this, and and to give them a chance to be part of this is the reason I think we should involve more community members in that larger group. I think too that you know everybody's got the concern. That, Everybody's got a job. The time is going to be, uh, you know, this isn't going to be easy and all the time. And, and therefore, with all these volunteers, they can they can ask somebody to step in if they're going to miss a meeting or, or not able to attend. But we, we want, I think it would be important to make the community aware, number one, that they're, they're welcome at any one of these meetings to sit in. But... <coughs> To make it representative of the community, why don't we? Um, I, I'd, I'd like to go with five in that in that top tier, and then bring all the those volunteers in for a thirty-minute, forty-five-minute meeting, and we can break out. We're, we're going to have what did you and I talk about, Dan? Seven or eight different if seven did, different if did, curriculum if we set categories. Them all up, yeah. If we set up all the different curriculum areas. We, we know for sure that some of these people want to be on certain committees. So we want to we want to align those names with those specific committees and then be able to vote, have the community vote on the extras, the, the others, uh, in addition to those, or however it ends up. But people get a vote. I think it would be appropriate to say, We've got seven committees, you can't be on more than two, which certainly can attend, can contribute, can have access to all the information, either online or printed. And I think this is going to be a great engagement tool for our community to, to have parents and community members be a part of something very unique. It's been a long time since, not only recently since we've done this, but um, this, this is long overdue. This is this is why we're here, is to get this curriculum focused in the right direction, and everybody on the same page and accountable. And I think it'll we're, we're going to see some very positive things come from this. I have no doubt. So then I'll I'll make a motion. So I got a question first. So just yeah, no, no offense. So so this group, the district curriculum review committee, would be meeting with the members. Is that what I'm hearing that? Yeah. They, okay. No, that's fine. I yeah. just want to make sure I'm on the right page. Well, I'm saying, as a board, we could be part of that meeting. We could facilitate that meeting. Well, this just says board member, where the top committee says three board members. That's what I'm wondering. Top one's got. Top one is the just district now, curriculum like advisory five. committee. It would be five there. And this would be the group. This committee would be the ones that would decide. This, that that would decide which five are the five. top one. Then or yes. The five? So you're saying the district advisor, district curriculum category, curriculum. district. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So no, district curriculum fine. advisory committee. Okay. And so then, will the committee work out the role and how it does things, or is it advisory? Is it decision making? Does do they do recommendations? I guess I. I, I, I see it as a recommendation. It's our decision, isn't it? I think it's school going to be board. an advisory. Absolutely. Right. People will be able to bring curriculum ideas, or Kathy and Dan, whomever, our principals, can bring curriculum ideas that people can see a, see and review, and you know, choices can be made from that. Okay, so... Yeah, because ultimately that's we're not forward. sitting in we're not sitting in on every one of these, you know. No, so I think the, bringing it to the back to the board with with you know thoughts and this is what the committee met and right. recommendation. What what are your thoughts, Cindy? That's fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. so the committee that committee 
could decide on the people or how the people yeah, are the, selected. The, 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 right. the volunteers, yep. the volunteers or the process could decide. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, no problem. Yeah. Then it's representative of, of them. Okay, so you were making a motion for what? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, put five. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I guess up to five. Up to five committee volunteers on each curriculum category, and and from there, it doesn't matter. Everybody else is welcome. So. So up to per committee or per content uh, area. Yeah. Per area. If they if, yes. On That's each correct. curriculum category. Each curric uh, content area. Content, subject matter. And they're and they're chosen then by the top advisory by committee. By the district. That top one. Advisory that district committee. curriculum. Or they determine how they'll be selected. Advisory committee. Yeah, yeah, how they'll be selected. Yeah. Is it a vote? Is it a? And my thought is they vote. There's, yeah. You know, there's 39 volunteers. Let let them vote, and decide who from the community they want to sit on these various committees. So that's part of your motion also? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Jeremy? Any discussion? I guess the reason I said up to five is because I think maybe we have two areas that want five and then you end up with only three that want to be on, on another one. So max of max of five. No, I wrote that up to five. Yeah. yeah. And then the members, the people at the the uh, community members vote. The community members vote. 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 With, I think we can just, you know, in each with the with the advisory committee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think in each curriculum category, we can create a ballot that will represent those people that were that asked to be on a certain one, and their names go first, and the rest of the volunteers go, and everybody gets to vote on a. In that category, and probably who is the chair top of the, five. the top committee? Who would be the chair? Of that? I would guess the superintendent. Probably yeah. <laughs> would, would facilitate it. Why are you laughing? You because <laughs> it's not you. Because <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> yeah, like and myself. So how that me. process will go will be determined by the committee. Then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and so you could probably use a survey monkey or something sure, for yeah. voting. And so can you read back the motion? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Okay. So Joe Ryan made a motion to put up to five community volunteers on each curriculum content area and let the volunteers vote for five people would with be the, the superintendent committee. as chair. With the committee. The committee would be yeah. Yeah. five. The, the right? volunteers. The volunteers. Do you want me to use the committee? With, so, yeah, with, 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 with the committee. With the committee. With the district and curriculum advisory committee. Okay. And not that it's worded that right. The volunteers then can vote in right. to put those people on. I, with that committee. I think what you're saying is that the committee is going to figure out how they're going to choose them. Okay. I think the committee needs to be involved with how that's the process of how that's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that that was my initial point from the beginning. Is I don't think the committee wants that. You're saying, hey, we're going to place this, these people here. And, you know, I think it needs to be, be part of the committee discussing. Part, part of the discussing, but I don't think you want, as the chair of that committee, to say right. these no. people are going here and these people right. are going there, right? right. I you think don't want to do that. so. If we're going to vote, I think it's up to the people at the district curriculum advisory committee level to determine how we with the volunteers. With, with volunteers, volunteers correct. You said survey monkey or yeah. Google yeah. form or yeah. uh, handwritten ballot. I don't know. Whatever. I, I've yeah. tried to run that process through my head of what's Gonna work best, and like, that's why I'd like to have some other. I think we just gotta good scratch out, scratch out a ballot and take a look. And yeah. see and we, what's you, the board members have already is it gonna be said who's gonna be on it. Right. Three. Oh, and who is that? Not me. And how was that? How were, who it was at a meeting. We th I thought we talked to to be on it since day one. Yeah. And that's all we. Got. I think Did, you've been you've already you've been named to it all along. Is I have. Yeah, I would. Every and Don, no and then Don was one. I thought so. Don I was on that Don. committee when Lisa was here. That specific committee is the one and, I referenced. And I thought that I may have been too, but I don't yeah. remember. When Lisa was here, Don. and um, previously, um, 
Because anyway. I think that they still do have regular meetings. It's just they have right. quite a few more when it's the time um, for the review. But because we haven't had a review in a couple of years, then I don't know if they've had. You any. may be talking two different things. So two there's a curriculum, the yeah. curriculum committee. I was on the district wide one that met outside of the school. We met at yeah. the public library, um, and that involved some, you know, Lisa and outside parents at the time, and we went through not necessarily the curric each curriculum we didn't we just talked more um numbers um you know are we on pace here i mean just yeah the district improvement so there correct. were more categories correct. than just curriculum correct yep. yep yep and so i was on that one and that on the district improvement committee that you guys just referenced jeremy is on is on it joe and don right now on the curriculum just lost it I think you're the only board member on there. It's never met. No, I won't sit here. We've never met. Well, I would be happy Staff to serve. I would be happy to serve on that committee. Which one? On this, the, the advisory, advisory yeah. committee. Advisory committee. So Joel, Cindy, John, and Jeremy. Can't have. Yeah, can't have four. Oh my. Okay. I, I just don't remember talking. About about it, I guess maybe that was decided when I, I think was here. I think it was. We just weren't quite sure what we didn't know what was going to go what, on. What you were volunteering to be on, I think is what we're trying to think. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Joe and Cindy, Jeremy, are you still wanting to be on it? Sure. Or, and then we'll see if we have to decide if Don or Kevin want to be on it. How we're going to go about doing that, but I don't know. But okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can go back in the minutes because I don't remember having that conversation about what board members would be on the district. Advisory committee. So I have the advisory committee as being Joe, Don, Jeremy. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. That's what we have listed on our website. Oh, on the website. But. And so how did that come about is my question. Well, I'm just talking from here because he said he wanted to be on it. Right here. Joe we, wanted to be on it. Right. So that's, to be on. That's, listed, that's listed on the website you're saying. On the website it's listed as Jeremy, Joe, and Don. So that was established January, yeah. whatever then, January right? January first or whatever. That's yeah. for the advisory committee. Okay. It said Not that the curriculum never changed. It's probably we never changed them from the year before. Right. right. The so curriculum. I thought it was different. just Joe. I thought there was just one. That's a different. That's a different committee. That's, different different committee. that's yeah. just Joe. Yeah. That's Sorry. a different um, committee. Okay. So you can leave it as Don three. then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We could have an alternative too, right? I mean, right. some one of us can't be there. You know. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Got everything? Yeah. Well, okay. Sure. <laughs> <that motion>. Um. <laughs> Approve the following policy, second reading, policy 214, out of state travel by school board members, 215, group insurance participation by school board members, 301, school district administration, 302, superintendent, and 303, superintendent selection. Is there a motion? I'll so move. No. Is there a second? Second. Jeremy, any discussion? Okay, uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, under new business then, uh, the consent agenda items. Was there anything the board members wanted clarified or anything? And that would go through 8A12. Make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Noel. I'll second. Cindy has a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I got a question. Um, Name 
names identified of speakers during that meeting? To Jennifer's point. Uh, in the in the meet, meeting minutes. In the meeting minutes. It's not required no. that we do that. No. It's not part of the body of the meeting. Okay. So if they were to ask to be formally on the agenda, then it would be if it was approved by the board chair. If they were on the agenda. But if they're just speaking, then it's not required. It's not part of the body. Has um, anybody from the independent age been in to talk about a, a review process or any changes to that with regard to verification of meeting minutes? No. no or comments? About the public comments, meeting. yeah. My, and, you know, they're going to do their best to write an accurate story, and that's all we ask for. But when names are deleted from those of guests that we've had in the meeting making comments, that doesn't that doesn't provide a very good situation for the reader. But they're not deleted. They're just not in there. They were never in there to begin with. So they're not deleted, but they're are not you, included. Are you but saying the comment was, but the name is not associated? Names, no, names weren't associated with those who There's made. no comments in the, in, the, um, in the board minutes. In the board minutes, because it's not part of the body. So that's completely separate then from the story the paper would write. They can... They can write it. They if can they include want. names. Yes. Yeah. All right. But it's not and, part of the body of the minutes. And so. maybe that's my point is if they're if they are making an effort to come to the school to verify the accuracy of the stories they're reporting, I hope we're doing our due diligence to make sure names are associated with statements and comments and in, just in, in the interest of accuracy. Are you saying for them to come for and ask them, about the If they were to come in and say and ask a that school happen. personnel, yeah, that doesn't happen here right now. Doesn't happen? Not right now. It, it hasn't been. Okay. Well, it I think should. it doesn't happen because the paper is wanting to their their role is to capture what they see and summarize of what were happening, right? And so if they start coming in and saying, Mr. Stifter, what did um, you know John Smith have to say now? Now you're it's capturing his summary, right? Yes. It's not, it's not what was on there. So I, I, I think that it, I would think that the paper would not want to have other people summarizing what's happened at the meeting. I would think the paper would want to verify sources and accuracy. I is my only thing. I don't, do I don't disagree. Though? But sources and accuracy is an imperative. So they can watch the stream just like everybody else, and they have come here too. Okay, yeah. So and how they report they watch the stream. Then. They've come here and they've not been very accurate on a few occasions. Is my point, and I hope they will make every effort to improve. That's that. their responsibility. It's just it's just something we owe the community. On the, I, I will back up on the. I got sent a copy of the. Re, I don't know if it's a retraction or the change. Mr. Chair, we can't yeah, hear Mr. Stifter at all. I can't hear him at all. I, I said I want to backtrack, I backtrack a little bit. I did have a copy of the retracted article from the age sent to me, but not really asking. I think it asked if, I, um, if it seemed accurate or whatever it was a comment. That's, uh, but to your point, when I asked yeah. anybody, I did get. I well, did what get happened that. in that situation, too, is the damage was done on the right. first story. Then they retract it and rewrite it. Totally lost the whole context of, of what had been said inaccurately, right. and and that's unfortunate. I just I'm sure they're doing the best they can with what they have. I and that's what I'm hoping for too. It just you know one it, thing I think that other places do is they will have speakers sign in, um, you know, and list their names. I would be okay with that. I mean, that would be a source that then anyone could look at to see. Sure. Um, I think that was one of the recent legislative updates, right? Of not asking for addresses, right. but that we could ask for um, for names. Names. I mean, if we could do that, we could wait and see if it becomes a problem in the future. I think most. Of, I think. I think that the chair does a good job of saying identify yourself for the record, right? right. So, um, provided that there aren't any IT issues, which that can always happen to. Yeah, so to your point, Cindy, they're, yeah, they're asking to sign in, 
you know, but that would then <clears throat> become the body of the agenda, correct? No, it would just be a record of, of them signing in on a sheet. I wouldn't think that that would be a part of anything. I, I guess my purpose would be just so if the newspaper wanted to have, like, correct spelling, that it would be, you know, write your name on here if you wish, and the paper could take Right, it yeah, no, out. right. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just saying, though, but if I come in and say, <clears throat> you know, John Smith comes in and comments from the visitors under number five, which is part of the body of the agenda, and wants to talk about something, uh, whether it be part of the agenda or otherwise, it's the body of the agenda. And that shouldn't be excluded from the minutes of the of the meeting. That's the news, ma'am. I mean, you're right. That's number five on our agenda, comments from visitors. If the name is listed, and the, it doesn't have to quote verbatim, you know, everything there, but, you know, I, I think there should be some, a generalization of what the comment comments were of the visitor towards the topic or yeah a topic what whatever it might be I think that it might be difficult for somebody to try to paraphrase or capture if somebody's coming forward um, as a part of the public um, I certainly wouldn't want to have that that role in trying to paraphrase what a speaker is coming forward to say if, if we want to start listing so, John Smith spoke but that's probably fine, but I think with us as board members, because we have control over the minutes from the last meeting, we then vote on if we believe that that's an accurate representation of what we individually said, right? If I'm reading through the minutes and the recorder has misstated some, or I believe that she has misstated something that I've said, I have an opportunity at the next public meeting to say that's not what I said or I need to clarify that. I have an opportunity to then vote on it. Somebody coming in from the public doesn't. I don't necessarily as a board member want to be having an opportunity to um, vote and include commentary from a person who's not at this table um, because those are official minutes that are kept into perpetuity, right? And so they're important. And I, I think that we have an opportunity to correct it because we're voting. I don't think that the, that a guest speaker has that opportunity, and I certainly don't want to be um, trying to characterize the summary statement of what someone is saying. I would be fine with listing their name. John Smith um, spoke during 5A. I, I, I don't think anybody who comes to speak is concerned about anything other than just report what I said accurately you know, it's all recorded. So we, we don't report it. What's that? We don't report it. So. That's fine. Right. My whole comment wasn't so much about the board right. and the process of reviewing minutes that are accepted into the record. It's more about the Aiken paper having access to, I mean, if I came and, and made a public comment and I was going to be uh, written about or that context was going to be written about, I would appreciate them making a phone call to me to say, this is what you said and this is how we're going to print it, if there's any question, or verify my name to make sure that that person's given credit for what they do. It's just about accuracy. That's the reason I raised that point. And that would be the paper's responsibility. Well, yes. And, and but, if we had, but I think if we had an opportunity for the paper to contact that person that was part of the meeting, Sure. You know, for that purpose would be would be good. John Smith. If you're signing in, we'd have that. Yeah, right. John spoke. So you if, could have a voluntary sign up sheet. Yeah. Right on the table. Good. If you want to sign, yeah. Yeah. And then right now. Okay. But no, if I can't read their writing. I don't <laughs> think it's for you. I think that there's a voluntary sheet on the paper and if I wanna say Oh, John yeah. Smith spoke. Here's John Smith. Here's my number. I think it gets tossed in the garbage. I don't think it's your paper. I think if it wants to be left there for anybody who wants to see, they can do that. I don't think that we require them to do it. No, and I don't think it's in the minutes. I think it's just a courtesy to the paper if that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If the H doesn't get it right, then I know. Yeah. We know the end result. Circulation keeps going in a okay. Bank. Anything else on the consent agenda? <clears throat> we had a motion and a second. 
um, nothing else. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Move on to number nine. Uh, discussion items approve. Uh, principal's contract for 21-22-23. Dan? Yep, yep. so 21-22 school year and 22-23 school year. We made some changes and adjustments when we hired the high school principal. Those are reflected in that contract, um, along with um, salary adjustments or changes for Paul Corella says he's outgoing and therefore <coughs> the returning, Andy is returning elementary principal, just looking for approval. They wrapped up one year operating under the old under the old contract, this would keep the contract hot up. I'll move to approve. Joe, move. Is there a second? I'll second. No. Any discussion? There's, it, you bet, there's been, obviously it's just Andy's now because Paul's right. retired, but so you had a review and, and, mm -hmm. uh, of, Performance yep. and yep. <clears throat> okay. They'll be doing another one here this summer. Yep. Okay. Anything else? I am excited for our new principal to start. I want to wish Mr. Corrales well in his retirement, and I am thankful that we have Mr. Dawkin on board again. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. Nothing else. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, the next contract approval is just with Northern Pines. Northern Pines has been uh, providing, um, sorry, providing um, mental health supports in both the high school and elementary. Um, they've expanded as much as they can find staffing for. It's just a continuation, really, of the contract that we've had, and uh, we are fortunate to have Northern Pines um, in our building. They're booked all the time and. Um, you know, if we could expand, we would. If they have staff and personnel, we would. So, okay. Make motion to approve that contract. So moved. Second. Okay. And second. Jeremy, no. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Discuss and approve the. Uh, 22 revised budget and the 23 budget. Heather. So I'm just going to say a few things about the revised FY22. So those changes are basically based on the rising costs, so the actual costs that we're seeing. Um, so adjusting to that, to the inflation, and then the contract settlements that we've had. And we've also seen uh, quite a large reduction again in ADMs. You probably see that report every month, so you kind of know that that was coming. Um, so revising the revenues to match what the estimated ADMs are going to end up with at June 30th. Um, so that's just the assumptions on the FY22 revised budget. So then I'll go to the focus most of my topics on the FY23 proposed budget. So the budget assumptions. Um, I have a question. Sorry. On the 22? Yep. The revised? Yep. So that 327, that's, we were, that's more money than what we, What's the 327,769 total. Okay. Um, total? Yep. So that we spent over our budget that much? Um, that would be we're deficit spending and all our funds by three hundred and twenty seven thousand right. dollars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And last year and our the one we adopted was at seven twenty three? Correct. So we 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 went back left four hundred less than we thought. We're not done yet, but that's Roughly. what we're predicting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Everybody know that. Thank you. Yep. Is, it, is there any reason we don't have that up on the report? Kind of. It'd be nice to have that for the end of the Do you want to? I'm trying to find the. Bobby, how do I find a projector to put it up here? <coughs> I 
Richard Shaw you have there. That's scary. He didn't want to embarrass Hobby, did he? Any AA? That's right. Thank you. Supposed to just pop up for me. Thank you, Hobby. So now we're going to focus on the, we just talked about the revised, which is the middle column. And then, so now we're going to talk about the very right hand side, the FY23 proposed budget. Uh, so the assumptions going into this budget are a 2% formula increase on the state aid, which was approved in the last legislation. Nothing came out of this most recent one, as we all know. Um, our ADMs, estimate of our ADMs based on this budget is um, 1,010, so another decrease, but not as large as this year from the prior year. We were down 68 from FY21 to FY22, so that's a huge chunk of money there. So our total expenditures decreased um, from FY22 by 1,514,135,000. Um, or 8.3%. So overall, the expenditures are down and the revenues are down, but we'll get to that in a second. So, and then salaries and benefits increased by 648,000 or 5.5%. And that's based on the contract settlements. Um, so some of the explanation behind why the expenditures decreased is the capital project levy that was approved for FY23. So those expenditures as planned, we're taking from fund one and three and then shifting those to fund five because that's where the capital project levy shows up. Um, so you're gonna see that shift. Front fund one and fund three expenditures are and revenues are gonna go down, and then you'll see the increase in Fund 5. Um, we also had the CARES, ESSER grants. We had a lot of one-time things that happened in FY22 and FY21, so we're seeing those funds kind of slowly dwindle. We do have, um, we will be spending the ra remainder of those funds through FY24, so through next year, FY23, and then we have, we'll have some remaining in FY24. Um, another big decrease in that overall number is the construction project. So we finished up the phase three, the secure entrance grant project. Um, so that is $687,000. So we had already received that revenue, so we're seeing those expenditures go down or disappear for FY23. Um, Can you slide that up just a little bit for us? Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So then we get to the revenue side of things, um, which we're, I'm a little backwards okay. here, so the revenue side is the first Revenue's. column. Um, the total revenue decreased over a million dollars or 6.4 percent and as i mentioned so the cares and esser expenditures went down the revenues go down along with that because they match each other the compensatory revenue decreased by a hundred and three thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars the gen ed aid decreased due to declining enrollment and then we're selling off um we're getting a refresh of our elementary computers in some high school um, this summer, and those revenues show up in FY22, and so we won't have that revenue show up in FY23, and that's about $120,000 that we sell off our used equipment for. So that that's part of that decrease. Um, and then just some side notes. Uh, as I already mentioned, the LTFM construction fund balance of 687 that's 
um, that fun six up there, um, that will disappear. That's going to be gone in FY23. So we, we pull a year over there and that'll just go away. Um, fun two, food, so food service. Um, so we, with the pandemic, we've been have, we've been using the um, summer food service program instead of the Na NSLP, the National School Lunch Program. And so we're gonna see another shift um, where we have to collect those applications. Hopefully we'll see a increase in the compensatory revenue along with that, but it's gonna be back to the old, you know, collecting those benef those applications for educational benefit. Um, so so food service, it, it, you know, might fluctuate a little bit just because we're going back and we have a lot less students than we had a few years ago. Um, so that's, that, that could fluctuate a little bit. Um, and then as I mentioned, the CPL or capital project levy is included that 900,000 that was approved by the community. That revenue is covering general fund expenditures, so technology and a bus purchase. So that does show up and that shows up in fund five. And then future revenue, um, as I mentioned, we'll continue ha to have access to CARES um, and ESSER revenue the next couple years. Um, but as we get closer, you know, that a lot of those funds are covering some of our general fund expenditures. So as we get closer, we're gonna come to that funding cliff where we're not gonna have that revenue covering that anymore. And, you know, hopefully we get more kids and more revenue, but if we don't, we're going to be deficit spending by a lot more than we are now. Without the <clears throat> capital projects levy, that <clears throat> projected 23, 600,000 is a lot different number, correct? Because it's a general fund balance. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're using most of that capital project levy to cover yeah, general fund expenditures. And so that number is what without the capital project levy? Um, so if we're looking at projected of six hundred million bucks, wasn't it? Thousand. Nine hundred something. Yeah. Yeah. If you take the whole nine hundred, but we have in this budget we didn't It's it's um, not all in the same year. It is, but we didn't budget for the entire nine hundred thousand. I would say we budgeted for about seven hundred and fifty thousand at this point, just because I wanted to leave a little in case the board had some ideas of other things that needed to be completed, projects and whatnot. So you're looking at one point three. That number would be yeah. <coughs> Without the Without capital the CPL. Yeah. And that's for 10 years we have that. So, I mean, that comes to an end too. We have it for 10. Right. right. We don't necessarily have to keep it for 10. Right. If we don't need it, yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so then. Where are you going? <laughs> I don't want to go on the screen. Um, I think you can just read it. Right there? Yeah. So right now he's talking about some future um, revenue. This summer in legislation, we were close to, um, well, some of us thought we were close to getting some cross-subsidy aid for the special ed class that the district takes on, mm -hmm. and that ended. So we're just hopeful that that comes back next year, next round, I hope it comes back. So that's a possibility that would really, really help us out. That would be... What did they figure about eight hundred thousand? We're about eight hundred, eight hundred fifty. We about eight hundred fifty thousand dollars of funding that we spend beyond what we get for special education, and, and that's a tough topic because I'm not faulting the special education. I'm faulting the way it's funded. Yeah. yeah. And there was a big push this time around. We thought we we're going to get some money. Even we got halfway there, you know, of what we spend, but with politics, played politics, and everything kind of got put on hold. So. Hopefully next year will come back. It doesn't seem like there's going to be a special session or anything, so I think are there any schools that don't struggle? That's all schools, pretty much all schools are struggling with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know anybody who's not in a deficit spending there somewhere. Right. In, in that Oakland. category. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everybody really got a big problem there. Yeah. It's statewide, and, and MSP did a nice job of trying to put that out there and sharing, you know, on their social media and just, and, and all the, it's one thing all the education groups agreed on is, you know, what we really need to address the cross subsidy, which is, is the funding we're talking about. And there was a push, but it just kind of stopped. So I think hopefully a momentum will pick up next year when it is a budget year and, and uh, we'll get something done. But it's another year we're going without it. And I, and I talked to like our surrounding districts about that same topic and yeah, it was, you know, if we had, if that had passed, it would have made a huge yeah. difference for a lot of us. Um, so then, so now I'm gonna maybe be a little bit repetitive on some things, but I'm gonna go through each fund um, and just kind of talk about what, why, why those specific funds change. So back to fund one, um, we already talked about the expenditures decreased um, due to the CPL, the capital project levy. Um, you know, we also we see expenditures increase and decrease. It would have decreased more, but we increased the budget by a lot for our fuel and utilities. I'm sure everybody's feeling that in their own personal budgets. Um, we had some uh, emergency connectivity funding that came along with the panic, some pandemic. Um, there were expenditures and revenues, so we're seeing those decreases in fund one as well. We also had a safety grant for 495,000. That was for the secure entrance and that was completed. So the, that revenue and expenditure side is also decreased. So just a lot of things add up to that um, big decrease in fund one. The total decrease was um, 1.4 million. And sal uh, salaries and benefits, increased by about 290,000 in fund one. Revenue decreased, and like I just mentioned, a lot of that was the ECF funds and then the safety grant. The CARES ESSER funds decreased, computer sales, compensatory revenue, and then the Gen Ed. And then we get to fund two, and we already talked about that a little bit too, but the expenditures decreased there. Um, and the revenues decreased as well. So the last two years, the funding has been coming from federal and now moving forward, it'll be based on the community's applications and the money will be coming from the families again. And that, unfortunately, that's been really nice for our families to be able to not have to pay those <laughs> lunch fees for the kids. Um, we also had a supply chain funding in fund two that we don't expect to have. Um, so because there were supply chain issues, uh, the federal government gave us some money to help with that. And I'm not sure how the money helped with the supply chain issues, but that's what they did. So we're gonna see those revenues and expenditures, not the expenditures, but the revenues decrease in the FY23 as well. Um, and then like I mentioned, we're changing back to the National School Lunch Program after two years of the um, Summer Food Service Program. And then we get to Fund 3, Transportation. Expenditures increased by 22,000. Um, so this is where the bus purchase comes in. So the bus, um, the bus purchase was funded through fund three, and now it'll be fund through, funded through fund five with the capital project levy. Um, so if that change wasn't there, the expenditures would have you know, gone up quite a bit. Um, and for this year, we're pl planning on purchasing one bus with those funds. Um, and then we get to fund four, so as Lara, talked about earlier, we're getting back to pre-pandemic activity. Um, and so the expenditures, we plan on those increasing. Um, in the, this budget, I do have it 
the revenue decreasing, and that's simply because I don't have all the information on all the grants that she runs through there, so I don't, if I don't know 100% that we're getting a grant again, or, you know, I don't know that what grants she has going on, so some of those grants aren't set in stone and aren't part of that budget, but so likely we will have higher revenues than we're showing in this budget. But community service has been, as she's showed you, has been doing very well, and I don't see it being a problem at all. And then we get to the fund five. So expenditures increased by 608,000, um, and a lot of that's due to capital project levy, so, um, had we not had that, the expenditures would have went down. Um, and the revenues increased by 815,000. So had we not had the 900,000, it would have actually decreased by quite a bit. And part of that, a lot of that is due to our student enrollment. So there's certain pieces of Fund 5 that are funded through, um, or part of the formula is funded by the ADMs. And as those drop, so does our funding for capital, operating capital, and LTFM. Um, pieces of that are funded by the ADMs. Um, and part of it is as we as we ha will have adjustments from prior years also. So we had some fairly large negative adjustments from prior years because our ADMs ended up less than what we thought they were going to. So we're kind of, we kind of took a double <laughs> hit there, um, which is why it doesn't say 900,000, it says 815 in revenues. So then, Dan, do you want to put that one up? Is it? Yeah. Fund balance policy. The fund balance, yeah. Bigger, but then so so then we get to the fund balance, um, the unassigned fund balance, and the fund balance which has the fund balance policy. Um, so on the very left hand side, we start with the June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Um, Sorry. Fund balance, and at that point we were so that's actual. We were just over four million, um, and then we added in our proposed revised budget for 22, our expenditures and revenues. And this, so this is our unassigned only. So this is kind of our checking account, savings account that we don't have as many restrictions on. So then we're planning on a um, deep that fund balance decreasing by 154000 at the end of this year, so June 30th, which is right around the corner. And then putting in the budget for 22-23, um, we show that we are deficit spending in the un unassigned by 272000 almost 273000 um, down to $3,676,000 which is uh, about 500,000 still above the fund balance policy. So we're actually doing okay there, you know. I mean, you can see that cliff coming, but um, as of right now, we're doing okay. Who manages the investments on this money? Um, PMA. And have we just always had them for forever? Um, no, we've had we used to do a lot more with Ms. Lack, um, and we've kind of gone away from them and more with PMA more recently. I don't know if that's ever something that the board considers um, looking at to figure out um, the fees and that sort of thing. I mean, I think in other industries that I've worked, it's usually every three years or so I uh, was involved in going out for bids to take a look at who were our uh, investment providers, what were their fees, what's the rate of return. I mean, I think we're all doing that on our own. 
private investments, right? And so I don't know if that's something that we would want to talk about or not. But for school districts, there's just a couple really that most schools go with. Um, so I, I, I guess I don't know. I haven't seen that schools. That's something that schools typically do. I mean, they you can spread it out between the two diff, a few different ones, but um, just so you know, you're not all in one place. Um, but since I've been here, we've gone more with PMA because they offer other assistance. They um, offer a cash flow. So they keep a close eye on the cash flow and where that's at, and they offer, they send us reports, and you know, they, they work, I've worked closely with them for a lot of years, and they do a good job. And that's something the other company doesn't offer. That's something that would, you'd probably talk about in the finance committee, mm -hmm. I would guess. Okay. So, any questions for Heather? And so we need a motion to approve the revised 22 budget. So moved. Um, Cindy moved, no second. Any discussion? Not sure um, said it. Oh. I was just thanking Heather. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Put together. So, uh, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And then we need a motion to approve the preliminary 23 budget. So moved. Jeremy? Second. Joe, second. Any discussion? And then is that um, maximizing the amount then for our enrollment for students, or is that a different topic that we talked about with as far as the levy? Remember, it ended up going through the levy. Is that? Is it setting the preliminary levy? I know we usually do that in August, so does that have any piece of this? Um, so the, the levy that we'll be talking about in August and September will be for the next FY24. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we approved. So what we approved in 21 is in this budget. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any more questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is that the remote for the huh? Is that the remote for the projector? I don't know. No, it's not. Oh. Bobby, how do I get off of there so I can go back to my my meeting? Or I just shut the projector or mute the projector. See how valuable you are? <laughs> <laughs> he does it with a smile too. Okay. Um, Denny would have done it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, busy. I'm reading my He's material. reading his best. Right? <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, approved the resolution establishing the date for filing affidavits of candidacy. candidacy um, August 2nd to August 16th. And those are dates that are preset by the state anyways, yep. right? So there's nothing magical about those. Yep. I would... Move to establish those. Move. Second. Jeremy, second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, 9E, Dan, approve activities yep. director Jason Klein. Yep, we had uh, Jason had applied for the activities director position. We um, interviewed. Two head coaches and Lisa and myself interviewed on Friday. We make the recommendation to hire Jason Klein as our activities director for the 20, starting the 22 23 school year. Is there a motion? Was it just, yeah. was it just one? We had one other applicant. Okay, good. There, good. Uh, two other applicants, one that wasn't qualified. Got it. Gotcha. Okay. So move somebody make a motion? No, nobody has. So so move. Second. Jeremy and Joe, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Approve resi resignation of Jason Klein as Dean of Students. Move to approve. Joe? Second? Yeah, I'll second. No. 
Any discussion? Yeah, so if we didn't approve this, this would yeah. this would create our we would it we wouldn't have to worry about going out for a dean of students. <laughs> and I hope he's watching. <laughs> well we did we made sure uh, we put it on to approve the AD first. Yeah. And then uh, and then, then uh, the resignation of the dean I guess students. we could pay him for both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, is there going to be a dean of students? Well, that's the point. Yeah, that'd be more discussion. More discussion. Yeah. discussion. We're just oh, approving the resignation. Okay, I got you. Well, the public clerk made a motion. It was your, uh, okay. Joe and Noel. Okay. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then the next part of that, I should probably have a, a, a spot after that, but okay. yeah, that will post for a dean of students position. Um, talking with Lisa and Andy both. We think it would be a, you know, we, we I talked about having a, a high school position. Um, both are in agreement. Lisa would like to see it as a high school position as well. I think it, uh, you know, there, there's definitely advantages to both models, but um, yeah, we like to post for that and see, you know, I don't know if we have any staff, current staff members that'd be interested or, you know, chance we bring somebody from the outside as well. So we'd like to post that tomorrow, get moving on that as soon as we can. Cindy. Was there any discussion regarding doing an assistant principal versus the dean? I know that with the assistant principal, they can handle more uh, levels of disciplinary action, right? Whereas the dean has to still refer. I know we've had both in the past, yeah. so I don't know if that's been contemplated. There's typically an increased cost with having an assistant principal. Um, there hasn't been a discussion with that. Dean students can do everything except suspend a student. That, that would still have to go back to the still have to go back to the principal to do that. Right. Um, as long and as long as they have the licensure, they can do the truancy. Yep. Correct. But they don't. Yeah. Yep. Correct. They can yep. do all that stuff. So our dean of students does the, the attendance stuff, the truancy letters. Typically, come through a principal. You know, principal signature. Correct. But I mean, they could do that. Yep. And then, yep. yep. Got it. Would there? The yeah. What's that? That's that, that's where I was going. That's where I was going. Yeah. So it would depend on the individual. Yeah. I see. I didn't know if it was worth it to try to do a lesser FTE as an assistant principal, or you know, a, a, to basically equal out the pay but do less FTE hours. Um, I don't know. I just wanted. I just wondered if there was consideration. No, well, not that way. I thought no. Yeah. Yeah. Does the Dean of Students fall under the teacher's contract? Yeah. So okay. moved. <coughs> Jeremy moved. Yeah. To advertise for Dean of Students. I'll second that. We will second. Any more discussion? I, I think it's important. You know, I think prior to this, Jason was going to spend more time at high school anyway. That's how it was moving forward, I think. and. I think with Lisa, you know, new spot, I think it's important that whoever it is spends time, you know, not leaving the elementary school out, but more more time at the They will be going school. to the elementary, though, too. Well, right now we're looking at, and visiting with Andy and Lisa both, we're going to try to be more of a full, it would be a full time at the high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Not to say that there are days or times where they could go to the elementary because Typically, that would be kind of a floater person if Andy's out. It'd be good to have somebody familiar with kids and procedures over there. Jason, you know, he had a couple hours a day there, half day there. So he, he, he was back and forth between the two buildings when the fall was never gone. But he, when the principal was out or whatever, you know, so. I, I hope we can uh, maybe get an update from you, Dan. I know in one of the, I think it was meet and confirm uh, meeting a month or so ago, there was some discussion about discipline referrals and the fact that they're up uh, significantly, and that's one of the reasons we're bringing the dean back to the high school. And I just think it's imperative that a new principal has an opportunity to, to, to run the high school at a high level, in, in, you know, engaging and, and assisting teachers and, and the cause and, and a lot less on discipline, which 
I know took a lot of falls time. It just did. And, and we've got to, we've got to find a, a solution to make that position more effective. Hopefully we can reduce discipline referrals. And that's, a, that's another discussion that will be coming up with the report that's done on that escape bubble each year. But, um, yeah, we, we, we had those discussions. Lisa was with us at a uh, meeting about the emergency services were off. And yeah, we, we started some good discussions. There. Good. Okay. So, any uh, more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I guess we're on to administrative reports. Committee reports. Uh, meet and confer. Joel, is that you down? Yeah. Um, we just talked a little bit about it. Yeah. I, I just know at the end, um, in particular, we talked about the funding going to the Danny, do you want to cover that for a second? Yeah. 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 I wasn't, I think I came late to that meeting and didn't catch the first part of the, the reservation versus the rest. No. Um, yeah. It was just looking at ways. The, the Part of what Meet and Confer does is uh, builds a district wide school calendar. And there's been a lot of discussion about how one calendar doesn't work best for both. So. Seems like we go back and forth if we move days here and do things this way. That's a benefit to Ripple side, but it doesn't fit to the high school. Um, high school, maybe where the quarter breaks are or things like that. If we change things so it fits for the high school, then that kind of doesn't fit to the Ripple side. Um, Aiken's gone, I don't know how many years ago, gone to having a, uh, like uh, conferences and, and those types of things all at the same time for both buildings. Um, there was discussion on, you know, what if, what if conferences were on a different day at Ripple side. High school maybe has a regular day of school, Ripple side, it's our conference day, because um, it would fit better to their, their grading periods or other marking periods uh, than it would in high school. And, and you know, there would maybe families that you know, were that three kids, four kids, some spread out between the two buildings, maybe it'd be a little relief for them. So that's part of the discussion. I think that'll be ongoing. Um, but you would think the calendar, it's the same, it should be just the same every year. Well, it's not. That's... There's a lot of things that come into play with uh, trying to get a calendar that works, and it seems like when it's all said and done, the high school staff a little bit frustrated with some things in the in the elementary staff because it doesn't you know doesn't always fit great for either one. So I think we'll look more at that, have more discussion about um, maybe we do go to separate conference days um, in the two buildings and, and just to accommodate the 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 actual educational programs better. I don't remember the details from Paul, but he seemed to uh, have a, a pretty good plan that was that was very effective, and, and it wasn't you know yeah, it be, wasn't uh, bogging down teachers. And and maybe instead of one long day of conferences, maybe we do two half days halfway through the quarter. There's a from three thirty to seven high school conferences, and um, we do that twice instead of having one long. I'll we'll figure out the hours mm -hmm. instead of having one long day just once maybe we do two separate and give parents the opportunity to to, to or, par or staff the opportunity to get parents come in however we're look at that uh, more often so we do have the infinite campus and that you know you get all the emails and updates that way but there's still a lot to be said for having a face-to-face -face conversation and just trying to figure out the best way to make that work in both buildings okay Okay, and then uh, next is the personnel committee meeting. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, on there we talked about a few things that were coming up in my report as far as um, maybe adding some time to community ed in, in, in the kitchen. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll come back to this then. Okay. If that works. Yep. And then uh, facilities and finance. Uh, I think it was Mary, Heather, and I, 
and facilities and finance. Is that facilities? Yeah. I bet you got a lot done. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we uh, what are we building? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am one update on what's been on the facilities and finance. I'm going to meet this week with the ICS to get going on our uh, facilities plan or facilities look, scope, and, and um, kind of get an idea of, you know, the outside look at our, at our buildings, our district, our facilities to determine, you know, is there, help us prioritize, I guess. So um, that'll be coming up later this week. We'll get rolling on that. So policy committee, we reviewed some policies that uh, uh, we're up, we're on here um, tonight. Uh, I think that again, that was a small group in attendance there. Yeah, the, the policies we have coming up are first readings are Policy 620, class rank, 209, code of ethics, 710, FRM. Form. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. 304 is superintendent contract duties and evaluation. 305, policy Im implementation. And 306, administrator code of ethics. Those are coming up. First reading, I should say. And then uh, now we have the superintendent's report. Yep. Going back to the uh, facilities and finance, um, we saw Lara's presentation earlier. Um, we are expanding our, our uh, um, kids club. You know, we mentioned we're at our kids club and community ed with a 0.5 position through grants that, that Lara's talked about. We'd also like to provide some support um, in community ed and, and, and in kids club just to kind of cover Sometimes, like she had mentioned, um, there's money in community ed in kids club early childhood to cover the to cover the increase. And what we do is we try and combine the position that was approved by grant funding or with grant funding in what was it May or April when we're out at Melmo, um, and then combine the two positions and 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 make it a full time position with funding coming from a couple of different areas. Like community ed and, and kids club and would have the funding to cover this position so this would be a position separate from Laura it'd be a, it'd be like uh, Bobby Laura, Laura assistant maybe okay if you want to give somebody that title okay. yeah. yeah and we, we had that prior to, so I'm not at everything. it would and we had that position prior to COVID when numbers and and uh, um, we couldn't do so many things. That position got reduced, and the person found a job elsewhere. And we just, Lara just absorbed it into her, her day. Now that programs are coming back, and I think they're gonna, they're coming back pretty rapidly. Actually, I think mm -hmm. uh, people want to get out and about, and and community members want to get involved, and we know members want to get involved with kids. Um, I think it's gonna continue to grow. We gotta be, we gotta be able to staff and and have the support there to make it grow. And the thought is that this would pair with the other half time that was approved to um, get somebody in more of a full time look and get more interest in the position. And is there funding? Funding come from funding. community. Yep. Community right. and and uh, what's the other source, Lara? Okay. Community ed and what's the other source? Kids club. Kids club. Kids, Kids club. club. Yep. Oh, that's right there in front of me. Okay. We need a motion. Is that yeah. yeah? Yeah. Looking for a motion. Jeremy. Or? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Jeremy made a motion. Second. Joe second to add a half time for the community ed kids club. Three point three and a point two. Any discussion? And that was a point six before. It was point five. It's just two different. Yeah, no, but I mean. Areas. No, before so before oh. it was structured, Bobby Joe was a, a, a 1.0 okay. and I was a 0. 0.6. Got it. Okay. Uh, when Bobby left, I went to a 0. 0.75 because COVID. Yep. That's where I got the yeah. 0. 0.6 from. Yeah. And so now we're just looking to replace the 0. 0.5, but in, in in pairing that with the other 0. 0.5 that was approved with ECFE, so making a, a more a, a full time position that. Yep. That will encompass kind of all of that. Okay. More questions? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, high school dishwasher. Uh, when we, Terry and the high school cooks do a wonderful job, but <laughs> Terry ends up washing dishes 
um, many of the days just to help keep up in there. And what we find is he's putting in added time, not putting in for it, but he's doing added time to get reports and things done because he's not able to do some of that because he's washing dishes. So our option really is, and I've, I haven't asked him, but I don't think Terry wants to work any added hours, but it's to find somebody we can, if we can find somebody to work three hours a day in high school dishwash as a dishwasher, that would free up his time during the day when he's not serving or having to be hands on in the kitchen where he can do some of the other paperwork that he's kind of doing on his own time now. Not kind of, he is doing on his own time now. And the, the, the kitchen account, the food service account does have funding that would be able to cover that. Cover that. Yeah. We thought maybe pair with a van driver, bus driver type, maybe we get somebody that would want a few added hours. Make a motion. Joe made a motion. Second. No second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, van purchase. If you let me just keep going. Yeah, me as well. Um, van purchase. We had uh, we have one van that's going to be going out of commission because ten years, ten years, twelve, twelve years um, in December, and then another one going out at the end of the school year, basically or next October, I guess it is. So a year out. Um, so they started checking on vans. Well, it's like they're, they're you got to order them and hope you get them. Um, we had yeah. two bids. Basically, it's a Ford van that. Um, there it is. A Ford van, Ford Joe, and it makes a van that works for the passengers we need. They got a bid from over in uh, Brainerd at Mills, and we got a, just got a bid today from um, Aiken Ford. Right now, we're just looking for we're gonna we're looking for permission to order vans now to see if we can hopefully get one by December at the end of December when that one goes out, and then have another one coming for next year when the second of our vans. It can no longer be used. So uh, this is new territory for us. Usually it would just be, you know, order up a van and you'd get it. Now it's, you know, we couldn't even get bids. When, when Michelle and, and Robert went to get bids, the uh, Aiken Motor or Mills would even say, yeah, we're not even going to bid because we don't know if we can get them. Well, now they're saying we can get you a bid. Uh, so that's a step in the right direction. So I'm looking for permission to pursue purchasing um, or, you know, Basically, place an order for two vans, and the uh, price is anywhere from forty-five to fifty thousand um, no, dollars. And, and it's I don't know how rock solid that would be, but that's kind of the ballpark we're looking at um, to get those vans replaced. But they're both coming up on twelve years. We won't be able to use them anymore. They primarily run special education routes and and a few other small activity trips as well. I don't know if we have anything to add, Heather. Did I miss anything? One of them is would be a hundred percent special ed, so we could vote that to special ed, and then we could see partial funding on that. Okay. So that would be good. Um, the other you. one would could either come from capital project levy or the transportation does have a fund balance as well. So we could cover that. Well, we might not get it for a special ed anyway. Yeah, but we don't know. Yeah, we'll get that a year. So yeah. moved. Second. Jeremy. Joel second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I have one more. Um, You're not on the agenda. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, go I ahead. For you. Yeah, what? I have. Yes, I am. <laughs> I was just talking. I was just talking for. Um, the interview today for the elementary music position. Um, it's five o'clock. Yep, so I have the contract. 5.30, I was on the phone with uh, the individual I offered the contract to. I have a contract before you for Lucy Swanson to be our elementary music teacher. I'd like to ask the board to approve that tonight. That'll help us out, ease our mind, knowing we got a position. That'll give her the opportunity to let her current district know um, that she's got a position instead of waiting until July to do that. So Lucy was here before, and then when they moved to Brainerd, now they're coming back. I don't. I think they might be living in the district now, so wants to be back here. That's a prerequisite. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, moved. Yeah. Second. Jeremy moved. Second. Joel second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That is motion carried. Okay, now are you done? I'll, I'll stop now. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, upcoming That's meetings. June 29th, Birth and Elf Committee. 
June thirtieth uh, negotiation meeting with the uh, AESF. Paris. Paris. July twelfth um, facilities and finance committee meeting. July thirteenth policy committee meeting. July eighteenth uh, the regular school board meeting here. I will be virtual probably in that one. I'll be up at, or if we're going to move the date, I'll be up at the art training on that Monday, Tuesday in uh, Herndon Town. But if we, I can zoom in, I think we're good with that. On the 18th? Yeah. Uh, I see that the department's uh, working session meeting. In Not Delaware. scheduled right now. We'll, we'll get that uh, curriculum. What do we want to do on the regular school board meeting on the 18th? We want to move that date if, he's, if Dan's not going to be here. It would probably be easier to move it. Yeah, I think so. You guys are missing me, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to do the 25th? Oh, we have a board work session scheduled for that. The 25th. The 25th. Yeah, we're the 25th, yeah. Otherwise, um, well, maybe we could let's do that. If that makes sense to everybody, and then we can fit a work session in prior to that. If Why don't we do that? We want to talk yeah. about those other things. Um, like on the 11th? Uh, yeah. Do a board work session on the 11th? Monday the 11th. I don't, that's, yeah, I'll be on vacation that week. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. All right. You will on the 11th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, not sure that I'll, I'm not sure that I would be able to, but that's fine, too. I've got a pretty busy um, trial calendar in July, so. We do a, uh, we have to do a Monday night no. work session. You yeah. could do discussion at the board meeting, too. On the 20th. Okay, so we're going to move the regular meeting to the 25th. If you need motion, right? Uh, by us, if we're going to do that. So we're going to do a board's, the board work session will go to the 11th? Is that what we're no, doing? No, Dan will be on it. Oh, he'll be on the 18th. So right now he's asking when we move the board meeting oh, from the 18th to the 25th. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, let's do that so we can get that. Get that. Done. That's what we, we need to do one first. Pardon me? Move the meeting to the 25th. Yeah, yeah. Is that a motion? Motion. By Joe. Second. Second by Jeremy. To move the July regular meeting to the 25th. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Hey, Jenny, I forgot to add the community ed advisory council meeting June 28th, 4 o'clock. I forgot to send it to. For what it's worth, if anyone wants to come. Okay. 24th or? 8th. June 28th, 4 o'clock. Tuesday. June 28th, 4 o'clock. Okay. 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 Ah. Uh, so, I don't know when we, you know, you were talking about a work session, but. Yeah. It's the 11th and the. 18th or something. Yeah. And before then, it's the 4th of July on the. Are you, are you gone that whole week? Yeah. Down the 11th? Yeah. We could do one in August, right away in August. Oh, you do on the week of the 25th? Mm -hmm. No? We have two meetings in a week? Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be like. I don't know. Okay, why not? Thursday the 25th. See, Thursday. Thursday the 20th. Well, we could have like a 30-minute meeting and then do a all and all session. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. You can do it all in one. You know that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, or later in the week of the week of the 4th, right? I don't know if that works. 
while people are people have a lot of stuff going on the week of the fourth typically. Well, it's the county fair too. Oh, that's right. I love the vacation that unless Jeremy wants to come with us. How about July twenty eighth? <laughs> we push it. That work session you mean? Yeah. Fine with me. I have a class reunion. That's a Thursday? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm twenty year likely not so available for the ninth of July and probably early twenty fifth, but <laughs> We can have on the 28th, but I won't guarantee I'm here. I so. can't be here the 28th. What about the 21st? That's the uh, week before. 21st work? That's a Thursday the week before. That would before. work. Tuesday? No, he's out of the meeting. Thursday the 21st. Oh. That works. Does it? Okay. Yeah. 21st? Sure. 6.30? Okay. Here? I suppose. Work session. I'll send you all a meeting reference. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, that mean it costs so much trouble. Okay. Uh, next, we'll we'll move on to uh, any other, anybody have any questions or concerns? Um, we could hear them now for a little bit. Anything else wants to add anything? Jennifer? I wasn't sure if I was going to um, do this or not, but after the first community member shared so eloquently, um, what I have to share complements that perfectly. And it is a former ninth grade student at Apple Valley or Rosemount Apple Valley Egan, telling about his uh, freshman year experience in that school and why he left that school. And um, I, I just want you to listen to his, his words. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years, and I'm gonna give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on. His name? is uh, Brad Edwards, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that. Inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take you. Just wanna make sure the recording's working. Okay, thank you. I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me, or half the kids that were in the class. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while, and I know most of the people, I know none of you, or most of you, don't have any kids left in the school district. Um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. So I'll never forget the look one of my friends gave me from across the room as we were sitting there listening to this blatant bias being expressed in the so-called equity statement by the leader of our school. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out, it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it and it was quickly erased. There are political signs all over RHS, specific, about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. So is that not racism? Disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin. To be honest, after enduring a year of the people in charge telling me that I'm a racist and I'm privileged and pointing out our irreversible differences, I've never noticed race more. And it's becoming the first thing I notice when I meet someone, which has never before been the case. 
RHS administration confidently told me that RHS students and staff are happy with their equity statement. But from the ex my experience in talking with other students, this is not the case. I know many kids who disagree with their teachers, but they're too scared to stand up because they're worried that their grades will be docked and their learning experience will be affected. My honors government teacher, I'm not gonna say his name, but he's mentioned that Democrats care more about all people while Republicans only care about themselves. And he's also inferred to us that socialism is better than democracy. He even had a statue. He had a statue of a socialist leader in his classroom. Um, I have been, I've been told by a lot of kids that they just stay silent and adjust their schoolwork to reflect an acceptable opinion to secure a good grade. I've been approached by multiple teachers who have told me in private that they just want to say that they agree with me and they support me standing up, but they can't say it in front of the class for fear of being disciplined by the administration in some way or losing their jobs. There is clearly only one way to think in this district, and that is that they are teaching their kids to shut up if they don't agree. Now, members of the board, I want you to take a good look at yourselves in the mirror tonight and ask, are you really standing up for the equality of all people, or are you just pushing a damaging political ideology um, on, on our students? A fellow coworker at my job, who, by the way, is of color, discreetly told me that the schools seem to be pushing a very leftist agenda in class. This proof is not everyone is happy with your school, and not everyone who isn't happy is white. Now, due to all these instances I've mentioned and many more that I can't fit in this five minute speech, I've decided to leave this district and continue school on a private Christian school online. And, and there will be sacrifices and I will not get to walk in the graduation ceremony or attend milestones at RHS, but I will be able to learn in an environment that is not intent on punishing me daily for my skin color and political views. Now, regardless of how you take my speech, whether you just shrug it off as malarkey or Fox News talking points, I encourage you to think about it, because someday I'm going to be a leader. I may be the president, a governor, or just a professional golfer, but I will never stop believing that everybody has value, no matter their skin color or personal beliefs, and it's a shame that you're not going to be able to say that I was an alumni of RHS in District 196. Thank you. This is Rosemount Apple Valley Egan, Minnesota. It's happening in this state and it better not happen here. I'll do everything I can to make sure all of the kids are treated equally and are given equal opportunities without political ide agendas and ideology. Thank you. I just wanted to come back up and identify myself as a volunteer for the social emotional learning uh, review of curriculum committee. So I know that it was stated earlier that maybe we didn't know who the community members were. Well, I am one, so I just wanted to say uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Nobody's jumping up. So at this time, we're gonna, we have to close the meeting for negotiations under statute 13D.03. Uh, we will be reopening the meeting and no business, but just to adjourn. So we'd have ask everybody to leave. Thanks for coming. Oops. Yeah, we need a motion. I'll make the motion. Joe? Can I get close the meeting? No, to close the meeting. Oh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.